So we're jumping back in here. Uh, we're about five minutes later. The time is 8.56, so we've been running for another five minutes or so. And you can see we've collected a whole lot more building pressures over here. And uh, here these are, I believe they're flow pressures. It doesn't know what the flow is yet, I don't think, or it doesn't know what the range is yet, but we'll sort that out later. It's collecting its data just fine. Uh, we can pop over to the graph here and take a look. Oh my gosh, look at all the stuff it's collecting. So it's collecting all these data points here. All these are readings. Each little dot is a reading and we get a whole selection of these together, a collection of these together, and we call those a point. So this massive amount of data that it's collecting uh, gives extremely accurate results, even with a fan like this which doesn't control well. It still gives excellent results. Over here we've got a little gauge that shows the fan speed in percent. Uh, this is the pressure change how rapidly the pressure is going up or down. I'm not sure how useful that is, but it's kind of fun. And uh, we have a range here between 39 and 42 that we're looking for. So here we're looking at uh, 40.9 pascals. And uh, we'll slowly start ticking the readings in here. If we put our cursor on top of this, we see exactly what the target is for whatever use that might possibly be fun maybe. So we can hear the fan in the background uh, ramping up. Speeds increasing. Taking more data points. Uh, I'll just call this the open range here. Let's just see if it likes that. may not like us poking around in the middle of an automatic test. I haven't really experimented enough to know that, but uh, I'm sure that you will. After the test is completed, we can come back in and change any of this data here. Uh, these temperatures can be changed and so on. Uh, it's laid out in such a way that you can go through chronologically running down here and of course the date comes in automatically and then the wind speed where the operator is sitting, the temperatures initial temperatures, indoors and outdoors. Everything is chronological, it takes the bias pressure, it takes building, building pressures, then it calculates these. So as we move through this, everything is chronological. We can also get rid of this, I think at the side here, at any time, if we want to just press on that. If you do make a click and nothing happens right away, it could be that it's occupied. It might take a while. It's got the shakes right now. Try clicking it again. Oh, there we go. It's gone now. So we're nearing the end of our test. The last point will be 50 pascals, and it's clicking this one here. Of course, we can stop the test at any time, change the range if we want to, and carry on. But we won't be doing that here. Take a look at that graph again. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just data up the wazoo. You can see, we're approaching the 15 pascal. 50 Pascal mark here with this last set of data. We will have a little bit of uh, pressure fluctuation based on the fact that we have one of our probes out the window even though I'm in my office and I'm emulating a small building I still have the effect of wind on this uh, building. This is pretty much what you would see in real life in testing a house. I can minimize that and there you can hear the fan spooling down, speed decreasing. Sometimes it's useful to see this little fella here because it shows you the rate of pressure change as the pressure is dropping. You see the building pressure dropping down there. We don't really want to take bias pressure readings until the fan pressure has dropped. This particular fan takes a long time to slow down. Our high power fans slow down in I think half a second or so and our regular door fans for house testing slow down in maybe th three seconds or so. This one takes more. I th think this reading sometimes might be a little bit high as a result, but when we look at the graph, it will show us whether that's causing a problem or not. A little bit of tail off that we have here could be the fan slowing down, but I think it's minimal in this case, and it's not really gonna bother us at all. And we're still taking bias pressure readings by the looks of it. Just had a little heart seizure there. 
So there we have a complete test. All these uh, little boxes have been filled out and uh, we've got a, a flow in CFM that's been calculated for each one of these flow pressures that the fan has produced. And uh, it looks like a fairly good test. It has an exponent of 0.5, which is it's a square hole in the box, that's about right. 0.999 correlation, which is excellent. And the errors on each point are relatively small. I'll just put the right pressure in here. It's actually the same temperature inside and out, so we'll just call this 68. Recalculate.